Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Airfix's recently tooled 1 to 48th scale Blackburn Buccaneer. So let's see what modern Airfix has to offer and is it really worth it? Hope you enjoy. So then to start off this kit, we're going to be having a look in the cockpit, specifically at the ejection seats. The seats build up really, really nicely with an outer shell part and then an inner uh, cushion or padding part. One thing which could have been nice to see here is potentially some fabric folds or a little bit of texture because at the moment they really do just look like slabs of, um, you know, plastic. I can then move on to put the other elements onto the seat. This includes the uh, overhead ejection handles. These have actually been molded really nicely. Uh, sometimes they are very, very thick from manufacturers. However, I think Airfix have got a brilliant um, thickness and also droop to them. I can then go on to the first bit of paint for this build and that is going to be using Ammo Mig's Flat Black. The Flat Black was utilised more as a primer than anything else as it gave me a really nice uniform surface to then go on to do some detail painting. Speaking of detail painting, as you can see on screen I am using a variety of greys, greens, olive drabs, whatever. These are all Ammo Mig colours and they've been thinned down about 30% to make them a little bit more suitable for brush painting. Once all the details have been picked out, I'm then going to be using VMS's gloss varnish to give me a really nice base before I then go on to use some oil washes to really create some shadows and bring out some of that nice detail that Airfix has molded onto the ejection seats. For this portion of the build, I'm going to be using two washes. As you can see on screen, I'm initially using this uh, dark sea gray sort of wash for the gray, as I thought black would be a little bit too harsh. And then for the black elements, I'm using this off-white wash, which I mixed up using some oil paints. Any excess was brushed clean or blended in, as you can see on screen, using a clean brush doused in white spirit. Once that was done, I can then move on to adding another level of detail onto these ejection seats. As I personally didn't want to display the pilots in these, I thought the seats would look quite plain without them. So for that reason, I bought an Edouard detail set as you will hopefully see, it makes the ejection seat look far more busy and far more like an ejection seat would be. That being said, I do unfortunately have to get rid of a couple of these really nice details that Airfix has to make way for the detail set. This includes the overhead ejection handles, along with one or two other little bits and bobs. To secure all of the photo etch down, I am going to be using VMS's cement. I believe this is the Flexi Black CA, as it just gives you a little bit more time and a little bit more flexibility to ensure you get the exact placement that you want on your photo etch. So that's why I use it. Speaking about the photo etch, as you can see, the colours and the detail does look absolutely superb on them, up to your usual Edward quality. The only thing that I would say is the seat belts were a little bit hard to. Um, get looking seat belty because they are so big it, it just posed a little bit of a challenge but I did manage to get there in the end and the final result was really really good so as you can see on screen here I am just showing you the final result I had to do this another time for the other seat however I think it was worth it but let me know what you think of it so after spending many many hours bending metal seat belts I was very very happy to see that we can go back to some normal assembly so the assembly is really quite simple in the cockpit, uh, there's some elements which have to be put on the side walls of the cockpit and there's also these holes which have to be drilled out if you plan on displaying the um, access ladders to the cockpit. I personally did for this build, so that's why I'm drilling them out. So on to some more detail here, I purchased this Kitsworld 3D printed decal or detail set for the cockpit. Um, I did however have to kind of colour match it to a paint that which I had. It was kind of this greeny grey which I didn't really like but you know I just kind of had to roll with it and then I could put all the decals in place. To secure these decals I'm not using super glue, I'm actually using PVA glue just because it gives me far more time and it usually means that there won't be any reactions. Once all of those sidewalls have been, uh, not sidewalls, but instrument panels and whatnot have been stuck down, I can then go on to cement the ejection seats in and the cockpit was definitely starting to look quite busy. At the time of doing this voiceover, of course, I have finished the Buccaneer and I definitely want to say that you can see quite a lot of this detail still when it is finished. So potentially it is worth investing a little bit either in the Edward Photo Edge set or the Kitwell decals, but that's up to you. 
another nice feature which you can see on the top of your screen is this little capsule. Airfix made that just for nose weight, uh, like a little capsule that you put all of your nose weight in, which I think was a really, really good idea as you do need to put quite a bit in this to make sure it isn't a tail sitter. I can then fully encapsulate the fully detailed cockpit and there is a really satisfying snap that you have to hear when you are kind of pushing these two in place. So don't be shy, definitely give it a little bit of welly, otherwise you are going to unfortunately end up with some fitment issues later down the road. So I can now go on to have a look at the sub-assembly for the gear bay. The gear bay on the Buccaneer is very, very distinctive as it overlaps with the um, engine. You know, you have these ducts which go through and they're part of the engine, but then you also have the gear bay in there. So it's a very complex part of the Buccaneer. However, Airfix managed to pull it off with no fitment issues and a very enjoyable part of the build. So. I have resin, but did I have the resin which I wanted? No, no I did not. I pretty much only had the set which displayed the right engine or the top half of the right engine, but I wanted to see the entire engine on my Buccaneer. So I got out my marker, I started marking off where I wanted stuff to be cut out. I got my Dremel out and I just started cutting blindly. It was a plastic massacre to say the least and we were left with this huge gaping hole in the side of my Buccaneer. However, we had this huge hole, but the whole engine wasn't detailed. So I then had to get out my scratch building skills and start to scratch build the rest of the engine, which wasn't molded on this resin engine. To create this busy effect, I used a variety of wire uh, diameters along with some plastic card and also even using some of the sprue, putting it in my Dremel and using my Dremel as a lathe to create these funky look looking almost gearboxes, which is a... Uh, very prominent on the Buccaneer to say the least. Once I was personally happy with how the engine was looking, I could then move on to have a look at the other elements of the interior of the fuselage. Some of these bits I could use resin, which came in the resin kit. However, other parts had to be scratch built out of plastic card, along with more wires and plastic bits and bobs. I could then prime the entire engine assembly and start to paint it. Interestingly, the Buccaneer engine doesn't have a huge amount of metallic elements on it. Some engines, you know, are just pure metallic. However, this one has a lot of pale blues, pale greys, and one or two little hints of metallic. Once the base colours were all uh, put down and had dried, I could then go on to detail paint the rest of all of these wires which I had put on. For this, I used just a variety of shades of uh, metallic colours, varying from steel colours to polished metal colours, and even some gunship uh, grey colours on a couple of the gearboxes. To then bring everything together and give it a little bit more of a worn look, I'm going to use one or two effects, first of them being dry brushing. Dry brushing will help to bring out all of those raised details on some of the gearboxes for the engine and then I can use an oil wash to bring out some of those recessed details. So hitting both ends of the spectrum, raised and recessed. As I wanted it to look more like uh, fake shadows, I used a darker wash here. I think I'm using a really, really dark brown wash here to create this fake illusion of shadows and here was the final result i was very happy with how this looked as it was my first real attempt at doing a huge amount of scratch building and somehow it still managed to fit a-ok -okay. a big highlight for me from this airfix kit was you know the fitment it was absolutely superb in all places there were very very few places where i needed to use any filler and if i did you know it was sorted in about five minutes another nice thing is as you can see there are these really nice indentated grooves so the parts really do just kind of slot and fit into place and there's great places to get a lot of glue on so you're going to have a nice sturdy model for some of the parts which had a little bit more weight to them, I would be using that black gunk that you could see on screen. That is VMS's Flexi CA Cement. It just, you know, a bit more security on those big parts and make sure that you're not going to have any hiccups along the road. I can then cement in place the top half of the fuselage. This goes together really, really nicely. A few clamps were used just to make sure it was held in position. So on to another aspect of the build, this is going to be the back tailplane. Uh, this builds up really, really nicely and here you can see me fitting some of the parts which would allow you to do the speed brake in the open position. I personally opted to have the speed brake in the closed position for this build. I wish I could give you a really solid reason why I did that, but I'm pretty sure it's just because I didn't want to upset the sleek flow and the sleek shape of the Buccaneer. This section can now be put onto the end of the other main fuselage assembly. As you can see, quite finickety to get it in place. However, once it is there, it snaps into place and it has a really nice join. 
for the Buccaneer, Airfix did opt to do this quite interesting way of putting it together in three modules. So you have the front module with the cockpit, of course, the main module, which is the fuselage and the wings, and the back, which is, of course, the tailplane. I was a little bit skeptical that this would cause some, you know, dodgy fitment issues. However, I really can say with heart that it went together really well, you know, and on the final product, let me know if you can see differently, but I can't see any obvious steps or seams between the three modules, which I think is a really, really impressive feat from Airfix. I can then move on to put a couple of the other elements which didn't fall into the main sub-assemblies. This includes the uh, really distinctive horizontal stabilizer. One quite awkward position which needed a little bit of work for me personally was this area just behind the trailing edge of the wing. It was really quite a fiddly area to try and sort out so I approached the guys down at Hannant's in London with the problem and they recommended that I should pick up some of these ammo sanding sticks and it definitely helped to do this really really intricate sanding. So if you are in the London area or around the London area be sure to go and check them out and potentially go and get yourself a new project. Cheers. So the reason for me uh, you know sanding this area and making sure it looks all clean and tidy is because I wanted to display the flaps in the down position as you can see on the screen and if it wasn't sorted you'd see this weird seam in a really awkward area so I thought it was definitely worth the extra effort to get it all sorted. So as you can see I'm now just trying to bring everything together before it's ready for some primer that includes masking off the engine and also the uh, gear bays along with putting on the underbelly some of the antennas and other little bits and bobs and also the distinctive refueling probe on the nose. I can now also really finish up the cockpit by installing the glare shield along with the blast shield and then mask off the canopy and temporarily secure it in place using some PVA glue. Once I was happy that everything was all sorted, I did rub down the surface before then using my primer. Primer of choice for this one is Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 Black. This was built up using my Harder and Steenbeck Evolution 0.3mm nozzle and I was spraying at around about 2 bar or 28 psi. The primer didn't actually reveal too many imperfections but any imperfections that were there were cleaned up before then going on to the main painting. As you can see I'm now showing you what scheme that I wanted to do this Buccaneer as. This is X-Ray November 975 which was a Buccaneer used by the Royal Radar Establishment so it had a slightly different scheme to usual. As you can see I'm going to be using the SMS colour range for this build that is extra dark sea grey, the white and also the signal red that I recently used on my Airfix Sea King. The first colour to go down is going to be the extra dark sea grey. This is sprayed at about 14 to 15 psi and I know it says pre-thinned on the tin for SMS paints however I personally like to put an extra 10 or 15% of thinner in just to really help them flow. After looking at some reference images it seems to me that the extra dark sea grey is the only colour that seems to really wear on these things or wear intensively in regards to fading. So for that I'm going to use some post shading effect. So what I did is I got the extra dark sea grey, put one or two drops of the white into the mix. I then cranked down the PSI and also thinned the mix a little bit more to give me a little bit more control over the spraying. This was the effect that I was kind of trying to go for. I know it looks very, very faded at the moment and very, very patchy. However, I do then go on to sort that out by remixing a batch of the extra dark sea gray base color, thin down quite heavily, and then misting it over to try and blend in the effect and make it not as prominent. You can see me doing that on screen and then I can go on to mask off for the white. For me spraying the white was very very basic, I was just trying to go for a monotone coat as when I looked at some reference images it really didn't look like the white got too much wear, potentially a little bit of staining, however the general colour stayed the same. For masking off as you can see I'm just going to be using some basic Tamiya masking tape. I do like this stuff as it has a nice amount of tackiness but not too much that it's going to start ripping up the paint. The white was sprayed down and then I can go on to do even more masking this time using some of Tamiya's flexible tape just around some of the curves of the fuselage which then allowed me to go on and spray the signal red colour. It looks quite orange here on camera however I can assure you that it looks a little bit different in real life and much more of that signal ready colour. I am potentially looking to upgrade or change my filming setup to hopefully get rid of some of these tonal variations and hopefully improve the quality of the video. Let me know if you think it's worth it or if you should think I should just stay with the same. So after the signal red was demasked 
Here it was, this was my Buccaneer very very basically painted and I was really happy with the result. The one thing that I would say is that unfortunately some bits of dust I think got under the paint so the paint job is a little bit patchy or like kind of dusty in a couple of areas so hopefully that's something which I can improve on for the next build. After the painting was all finished, I can now spend a little bit of time getting the model ready for the gloss varnish before the decals. That includes putting on some of the elements such as the gear. These gears are really, really sturdy, which is a really good thing as, you know, this is quite a heavy model as the Buccaneer really is quite big. And especially if you've got a resin engine in there as well, things start to get a little bit heavy. I can now seal in all of my work using Mr. Color GX100, which is a super clear finish, which gives me a really nice base for the extra decal decals. <laughs> there are some really quite big ones, however, these are all sorted out using just very simply micro set and micro sole. These are quite delicate um, decals in my opinion, so you don't want to go and use any of the super harsh chemicals, such as you know the ammo mix stuff that's really quite harsh, and also the Mr. Mark setter. That being said, Micro Set and Soul works an absolute treat on this one. I hope you can kind of see on film how well a lot of these decals went down. Um, definitely still some room for improvement, however, my decal application is definitely getting there. Before I use another gloss varnish to seal all the decals in, I'm going to put on one or two other elements. Even though X-Ray November 975 probably would never have had ordnance or anything on it, I really did want to put one or two of the really nicely detailed missiles and, you know, anti-ship um, ordnance onto it as it just kind of looked a little bit plain without it. So, you know, you can criticise me if you want, however, you know, I, I just kind of wanted to put them on there. So as I said before, everything was then sealed in using another coat of Mr. Color GX100 before going on to the weathering. Weathering for this is going to be really simple. I didn't want it to be too weathered like some of my other builds. I'm just going to be using some very simple washes. To give a nice contrast to the quite dark extra dark sea gray, I'm going to be using one of these neutral washes on the top. For the panel lines, it is uh, quite specifically kind of dotted into place and I let capillary action bring the wash along all the panel lines. And then for the areas where there's, uh, you know, some really nice rivet detail, I'm going to actually use a small flat headed brush and kind of wipe it over. This just, you know, it, it's, a, it's an easier method of using or, or picking out each individual rivet using a, a, a finer brush. As you can see, I'm using a different tone of wash here as well as the uh, light gray or the neutral wash didn't complement the signal red as much as something like a dark wash would. Uh, once I've left all of these washes to dry, only for about 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to come in with a clean paper towel and just wipe it off. I try to wipe off in the direction of airflow, so if any stains are left behind, which I couldn't get up, at least they're in the direction of airflow, so it makes it look a little bit more realistic. Also, if you wanted your wash to stick in the panel lines a little bit more, I would recommend either using a satin finish before you start to um, use the wash, as it's a little bit more grippy than this super fine gloss finish that I went for here. I didn't like how glossy the aircraft looked, it looked a little bit too much like a toy. So what I did is I got a really highly diluted uh, flat clear and brushed it on and then it brought it from a super gloss down to maybe, you know, a semi gloss. So the last thing that I want to do in regards to weathering is using some shaders just to bring out some shaded regions and break up some of those really monotone bits of the build like the signal red. I used some masking tape to create a really nice sharp line between the region of unshaded and shaded regions, however you can do it freehand and get a softer effect. I was careful not to go over the top with the shaders as I thought too much of it really would have, you know, it, it would have ruined the build. However, I was definitely happy with the outcome of it and then I can start to put on the final bits and bobs including these access ladders and also removing the mask of the canopies. I used some small amounts of ultra glue by MIG to stick the canopy in the open position. And that was this build finished. So I really do hope that you have enjoyed my take on the second Buccaneer on this channel, but this time in 1 to 48th scale. It was a really enjoyable kit and I really can recommend it if you are a Buccaneer lover. A small announcement before I go, I will be attending Scale Model World in Telford in just a week or two. So if you see me there, be sure to come up and say hi. Anyway, enough blabbering from me. I really do hope that you've enjoyed this video and this build. Enjoy all the final photos and I will see you next time, guys. Bye bye.